Okay, can you guys hear me? <clears throat> Sorry. Might as well jump right in because sometimes it takes a little bit longer um, to obviously get a game because it is a longer play game. Um, so let's see if that happens. Um, okay, let me just transition here. You guys can watch as GM from France is busy, busy destroying a Brazilian. Poor guy. Um, well, then again, he's not actually destroying him. Uh, so far, it's one all. Pretty good, pretty strong. A lot of strong players here that aren't not grandmasters these days, so it's not uh, entirely that easy for the for the grandmasters anymore. But of course, that's a good thing as well. Um, you know, it's not about easy wins; it's about improving your chess. Okay, so let us get in here and see if we can find a game. Hopefully, that is the case. Let me just change the time control here. 15 10 and let's see if we can get an opponent hopefully we don't have to wait too long so yeah so the objective of course here is you know on this uh, uh the road to gm sections i have been working on end games and middle games mostly um and we are literally just trying to apply what we learn so you know try and play every day and to apply the things that we have been learning so uh, our rigorous focus have been uh, middle game things and of course we do a lot of tactics as well but of course the tactics you know I already am quite solid at applying them it's just about being able to spot them when uh, they obviously occur you guys can hear me fine I assume it looks perfectly okay on my uh, on OBS so I assume it's okay but as you can see we are waiting Oh. So uh, one of the biggest things that we have been focusing on from a middle game point of view is just assessing positions. So uh, looking at the first thing we look at is obviously the material. The second thing we look at is if there's any immediate threats. Ah, there we go. Hey, we okay. So our opponent is from Iran. Let's hope he's not a no show. It is a run, isn't it? Yeah, from your run. So it's slightly lower rated than us, but that doesn't mean much. They generally are strong. Now the question is, do I want to play a main line or do I play C6 like I have been playing in Blitz? Hmm, I want to play C6, okay? Because maybe I can explain um, the Knight A6 idea a little bit better, obviously now that I have the time to do so. So most players play d4 now, most. So let's see what happens. It's usually a little bit slow at the beginning, of course, naturally. Okay, so d4, I get to play knight e6. Now, of course, if they do take, then I just play queen a5 check and then take with the queen, which then in turn takes this lovely diagonal a6 to f1. So that is the thought process behind Sorry, behind knight a6. Um, and of course the knight just comes back to c7 and supports either the d5 push or the knight in a lot of cases goes to e6. And no, I'm not drinking alcohol. In case anybody was wondering, <laughs> it's just some coke. Could have had some whiskey or brandy in there as well, but uh, no. It's okay. It is a good time of the night for that, though. I mean, it is 1 a.m. in the morning for me. Yes, I don't sleep, obviously. So, let's see. Obviously, if I can do this every day as well, you know, you see, my opponent is already confused by the move knight a6, and, but he's doing the right thing. Okay. This is something that I want you guys to know, uh, is that when you face some sort of thing in the opening that you you don't recognize or don't realize don't just just make moves that look naturally okay it's important for you to really try and suss out why your opponent made such an odd move okay especially if it's just an odd looking move not necessarily a bad move okay if it's obviously a bad move then you just exploit it and go ahead but here my opponent was just trying to figure out why did i play there and maybe he did look at this line and just trying to figure out you know what is going to end up having so you'll see that i'm going to have 
a pretty solid pressure along this diagonal with my queen and the white squares can become a very very big weakness for him because he just gave up his white squared bishop i have had quite a lot of interesting games where i have won because of it hey chess guy back again so um so let's see what he does I mean, he's, but he is burning a lot of time but again that is not a bad thing to do because you do have time this is the whole point no point in have, playing a 15 minute game if you're only going to use one minute of your time to play the game so i like what he's doing i do the same if i am not sure about something then i take my time what are you lolling about chess guy <laughs> Oh, are you asking Addy why lol? He was just laughing at something I said. Not, I think, uh, you. Okay, so now... Just need to think whether I want to go into funky variations here. Okay, I'm going to play... Okay, so let's, let's, let's in turn take our time as well. Because I've had this issue where I play knight f6 and they play e5 and then I have to take... Then I have to play knight d5, and I have not been that happy about it. Now I'd like to point out that there are some interesting ideas here with even e5. I could play aggressively if I wanted to. Maybe d6 and e5 straight away after that is not a terrible idea. Because I have ideas with bishop um, c5 and with bishop g4 ideas as well. Putting pressure on the white squares once again. Oh, the position? Yeah. Did you see how that happened? I went queen, a5 check, and then took on a6. Uh, it does look a little odd, I I will admit. But um, it is a legitimate opening line. There is nothing wrong with it. So now I'm just trying to figure out whether I can play d6 and e5 straight away. I'm not too convinced, to be honest. Usually I would play it the other way around. I'd play g6, bishop g7, etc. Just trying to figure out whether I want... Okay, I'm going to play d6 first. Uh, keep my options open, of course. It opens up the bishop, of course. And, you know, I do get a little bit of extra control over um, the e5 square. So let's see what my opponent does now. Usually they castle, of course. Let's fix my mic. So usually they castle now. I might even want to play something like knight h6 in the end to avoid e5 problems. But then again, e5 here may be not such a bad issue. I mean, you know, if, if I play knight f6, e5, e5, pawn takes, pawn takes, and then even something like knight uh, g4 is plausible. I'm going to play g6. I want to bait him into playing f4. f4 obviously is not so great because of the bishop going to g4. And putting pressure on these on these uh, these white squares. Hello, Zuzu. Not quite sure we have met, but hello. <laughs> no, I see my. Okay, never mind. Looks like it's okay. Okay, I got a lot of big fat crosses on my board now, don't I? <laughs> So it is a little slow. I will admit that this opening is a bit slow, of course, for black. Okay. But white has to continuously be careful of all kinds of funny, funny things, you know. Okay, I don't really care about that. Bishop g7, we'll play it. Now, of course, he keeps on having these issues where he has to be careful of his central pawns as well. Let's just see where this goes. See what he does. Hi Zuzu. <laughs> mm. 
Let's see what he gets up to. If he wants to play f4, he has to play h3 first. Yeah, so he plays h3 first. Now, my question really is just, can we go... Knight f6 off the e5. Ooh. Okay, so there are there's another variation here as well. We could play knight f6 if e5 immediately knight d5. Because then if takes takes if he takes on d6 we can take with the queen. But that would be a concession which I am not entirely sure I like. Now of course e5 is still possible to be played as well. But now it seems to justify the point because our bishop wants to stay on this open diagonal. Knight h6 of course now is not possible because of the obvious. Now I do have a move like queen a5 possibly as well. It's just attacks on g7, uh, g5 I mean. But I don't like it. I like my queen on this diagonal. Hmm. So the question is just can I play knight f6? I, th I do believe I can. But I just want to make sure that I don't stuff up anywhere. I think it's okay. I think we can bite that bullet. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it's not that easy because he can open up the position very easily if I do castle queenside. And of course I can't castle queenside immediately because of the e7 pawn hanging the whole time as well. So I have to consider this problem. Of course I could just play off the e5, I could just take take and play knight d5 anyway. Because he cannot take me uh, in the end. He can't take the pawn on d5 in the end in that variation. Because his knight on e2 is still hanging in that variation. So, hmm. Okay, so he goes for this. Interesting. Didn't think he'd have the guts. Okay, so the idea here for him is that I cannot play castles now because of e5, because the e7 pawn will be hanging. Interesting. It's quite aggressive though. Quite aggressive though. H6, Bishop H4. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Very aggressive as well. Takes, 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 takes. <laughs> cool, man. Thanks, Zuzu. Thanks for the pop in. It is an interesting position. So now I'm just trying to solve the problem. As you can see, I don't mind taking my time. It's okay. You know, I've got plenty of time. Okay. This is one of the things that you guys want to do. Okay. You want to take your time.
Now bishop e6 is the move that I am currently looking at. F5 does not scare me very much. And neither does D5. And neither does E5. So bishop e6. Now note that if he does, let's say, play f5, I could take. And if he takes back with a pawn, I could play, let's say, um, bishop c4. And we can put pressure on that. And of course, there is no real threat to my king. I haven't castled yet, and I can castle queenside suddenly. So bishop e6, I'm just trying to see if d5, then pawn takes, pawn takes. I can just drop back with bishop d7 even. It's not a real st stretch. Or a, I, if he pawn takes, I could just play bishop d7 immediately. If e5 then takes, takes, and the pawn is forfeit on that square. Although, he does suddenly have a threat on... Um, on f7 in that variation. I've got to be slightly careful. Interesting. So we have to be a little careful here. There's no point in being too aggressive and playing too fast here. So d5 does actually present a possible problem. It is interesting. I have this interesting idea of bishop e6, d5, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop f5. And now, actually no, that's a pawn takes, pawn takes, I don't think, I mean, okay, bishop f5 anyway. If he plays g4, I can play knight takes g4. Then my bishop suddenly becomes strong. I have this threat, his king is exposed. My bishop is much stronger on uh, on g7 is suddenly strong. I have multiple threats everywhere. It is interesting. Okay, let's see what he does after bishop e6. I am uh, I'm curious to see what happens in here in the end. I am not worried about f5. I feel like I can just take it because I I can still castle queenside in that variation. Let's see where this goes. I did burn a lot of time, obviously, in this move. So he plays e5 immediately. Now, I'm not sure if I like this move for him. I mean, I could just play um, knight d5 straight away. Okay, 95 is logical. Nothing much to think about there. Trying to see how I will, should I take with the pawn or should I take with the bishop? Sorry about that. But I mean, knight d5 is fairly logical. I guess I could have played knight um, d7 as well. 
also would be possible. But knight d5 seems fairly, fairly simple and fine as well. He pretty much has to take, really. I guess he doesn't have to take. But he will. I think pawn takes might be slightly better. Although, I guess after f5, things could get messy. I mean, not f5 immediately, but it's something like g4, f5, or or. Okay, let's take with the bishop. Let's, uh, let's bite the bullet and take with the bishop. Uh, F6 does present itself here as well. Of course, I do have to worry about the check. So my problem now is that I can't castle. That is the only real issue that I'm struggling with right now. How do I Castle. F6 looks like I might even have to play it. I guess I don't have to worry about any checks. I can just go sit on F7 if I have to. And of course, you can't play queen e2 because my queen still defends the square. So f6 for now, just attacking his queen. I don't mind the double pawn because I will get the open c file. So we're so now I corky cat. So now what we're doing is I am focusing on dynamic advantages versus static weaknesses. I'm gonna have that double pawn, which is a weakness on the d file, but I will have a semi-open file for it. That is a very, very good question. How to remove a carrot from your bum? Well, first of all, I would avoid putting a carrot in my bum in the first place. Just a, a small idea. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take with a pawn because I wanna give myself the extra tempo. In which case, I'm not gonna castle. No, no, we're going to be brave, and we're going to play king f7. Yes, because we're ballsy. We're just big, fat, ballsy people like that. Now note, again, that we are still okay with the white squares as well. It's a shame that we can't get a tempo on the... Ooh. I just noticed something as well, that his f4 pawn is weak after... <laughs> dab. What are we going to dab, Carl? Carl Brew, what are we dabbing, Brew? Really? That is a good question. What are we dabbing? Hmm? We just dab it with some, some oil. We, maybe some lubricant. <laughs> but okay, if you are going to shove a carrot up your bum, okay, and my suggestion is... Get a rabbit. They'll sort it out for you real quickly. No problems. No questions asked. Okay, I might have over, as, under, over and or underestimated his position. Hey. Because that is strong, isn't it? Okay, does he have any mate threats? That's the only real question we have. Okay, so his rook's going to go there. But of course, if he goes rook check, as he is planning on trying to do, so I can play f5. If he goes rook check, then king f8, 
And of course, the pawn is hanging then, and he has to watch out for the obvious. Uh, anything to do with h6, g5, possibly even. And his queen will be hanging as well in that variation, naturally, as well. So I'm not quite sure if I'm convinced. Where are you playing your first event, Corky Cat? Now, I am looking at the option if I can take. Because I'm very, very interested in... Yeah, 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 of course. I'm very interested in, in the obvious option of of taking the bishop. So what? Queen check? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen check. That's fine. Whatever. Queen check anywhere. It doesn't matter. King goes down. I assume he'd play something like queen check there. And then he'd play rook to e7. That is what I assume he wants to do. Now I could play takes on d4 with a check. But it doesn't seem like I can survive. Maybe I attack his queen after that because if he goes check I'll go king f8 and then what? What does it really have? So, you know, taking on f is very tempting, to be honest. Uh, taking on g5 is very tempting. Because I don't see a mate right away. I see a draw. Yes. Okay, you know what? I'm going to play f5. I mean, it's a logical move to play f5, of course. I'm not worried about rook e7, of course. Not stressed about that. Not very much anyway. Maybe I should be more, but I'm not. Okay. So king f8. So his queen is hanging and his pawn is hanging on d4 as well. He can't go queen e2, of course, because I can just take it. Small bonus. Risky business, I say. From me, of course. Playing a little risky. Not gonna lie. I know that. Playing quite risky here. I guess I can't. Well, I can because it's check, but I have to be careful of uh, bishop h6. I guess it's not possible immediately either. So. So, so, so. I can take the pawn check, but... I am a little skeptical about that. Okay. What I do not like, I must admit, H six G five looks very tempting as well. H six Bishop does whatever it wants to do, but he has a mate threat. I can't, I cannot, yeah, I know my time, but let's not panic about time. Never panic about time. <laughs> um, okay, so let's play queen here. I don't like it, but we don't have much of a choice in the matter. I must admit, if he gets if he gets his queen to e6, I'm in big trouble. Kinda didn't really notice that, did I? This is a problem. 
small but 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 everlasting problem yes of course i do have the move rook e8 possibly hanging around there somewhere this is going to get messy very quickly folks I do also have bishop e5 ideas as well if I have to. So I'm thinking maybe rook here. If he goes rook there, then bishop e5 maybe. Pawn takes, 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 takes. And that's mate. Wait, hold on. So no, I, I, I see a mate. <laughs> I am seeing mates. Takes. Hmm. I might be wrong, but I feel like I might be right too. Takes. King goes there, maybe he goes check, I'll go king here. Rook is already there. The pawn count then. I would be down a pawn, wouldn't I? Yes. Okay, now we are legitimately in time trouble. <laughs> it was all part of the master plan, folks. Yeah, now I have to play this. Don't have a choice. I'm trying to see if there's any way I can still salvage this. Yeah, I know it's it's probably a victory for white. I do agree. I guess there's that move as well, isn't there? Yeah, I kind of forgot about that move as well, didn't I? Oops. <laughs> but I do think... No, I don't think there was a mate, luckily. Somehow there was no mate, I don't think. Okay, well, this is pretty much over, isn't it? Just queen takes and I'm dead, yeah. No, he played well, though. He played well. I, I did underestimate the, the queen g4 move. That is the move I underestimated was queen g4. It's a very nice idea. I, I'm going to resign uh, because, I mean, this is done. So let's just quickly go. Is there still a mate? Couldn't I just take on e6? Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe you are right that he could have made it yet. Well, I mean, I'm going to resign anyway, but um, I'd like to go through the game a little bit. So let's just quickly go back. So I did underestimate queen g4. I will admit that. Queen g4 was the move I missed here in this variation. Now, I'd love to see if I can. Can I take here? I don't think so, hey. Pretty sure I can. He goes check here, I thought. Oh, it's it's a draw at worst though, but can he win is the question here. Yeah, I thought he had lots of mates I mating ideas as well. No, yeah, this this also looks troublesome anyway for me. I I'm pretty sure I'm in big trouble up the queen g4. That was the move that I missed in my in my you know initial variation here. Um, so possibly maybe uh, you know I should just take with the bishop. You know, take with the bishop, and I probably am fine. Could run into the same issues. Not quite. No, it's not the same problems now. So now, like let's say if he takes, takes, and goes rook check. I can move king, and obviously this doesn't work anymore because of the obvious f5, and just rook e8, and I should be fine. 
uh, with a rug going here and here looks great, you know, just to close up the whole line, the whole file. So let me just go back a little. I just want to see if there's anything else. After here and here, rook check. Maybe I have an intermezzo. Maybe I can play king f8 first. Maybe maybe king f8 is the move that I... <laughs> maybe maybe king f8 is the move that I that I uh, also kind of like just discarded too quickly here. Because now queen g4 is not a check obviously. And I have ideas like if he does play here, I have ideas like this possibly. But okay, I mean you can see my s6 pawn is hanging now, huh? So that is why I didn't like this so much, but oh well. But okay, I could just play rook e8, surely. I mean, even if he takes, takes, of course, his queen can never go to e2, which is the important part about this. So it should be fine for me. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Sorry, let me go all the way back. Uh, just want to go a couple of moves back. Okay, so we played here, he played here, I played here, he went check, I went here, he went queen here. And there's nothing else here. I mean, if I go check here first, I don't really think that changes much. King, let's say, goes here. Maybe what I also miss here is a, is an idea of playing queen b5, maybe, to prevent a little bit of something. But, I mean, the same issues are here. If he gets a queen to e6, I'm done for. It does look troublesome, doesn't it? Does look very troublesome. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Okay, what if I go here first immediately? Will that help me at all? I don't think so, but you know. What was that question, isn't there? I thought it would just take. Take and play queen takes d5. This looks problematic at best. Maybe I can survive with like queen e2 or something maybe. It's not pretty. But maybe I can survive. Of course he just takes in d6, doesn't he? Yeah, this is not pretty. Uh, my king is very exposed. So yeah, you can see I haven't played in a little while. It's been, it's been a couple of weeks actually since I played proper, yeah. So, uh. But it's okay, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll play again tomorrow, it's fine. Perfectly fine by me. Um, so let's go all the way back a little bit here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. So here maybe I got a little bit too too aggressive. Maybe off the e5 I can just play knight d7. Is that playable? And even after this, this uh, pawn takes is also possible. I was slightly worried about maybe g4, but maybe, maybe, what, what does it matter? I can just move bishop d7. You know what I'm saying? Maybe now we take here. If he plays pawn takes, I have check here, of course. But also, I have ideas of doing the following. I have ideas of h6. If bishop here, I can play g5. Some very interesting ideas, you know, like now if he takes, I can take on e5. So we play for the center, and of course his king is not as beautiful as you would like to think, you know. And my bishops are very strong, so maybe this was a much better idea. So if I, if I take with the pawn, what does he play after pawn takes? I mean, if he takes here, I played queen takes, of course, so that doesn't help him. If he plays, okay, he can't play f5 straight away. If he plays knight g3, maybe, let's say. Um, I have the same ideas I can take here. If he takes with his pawn, obviously I can win a pawn, but I don't think that's very clever to do. But I do have this idea, and I like the idea of playing this. It's pretty cool. Now if he takes, again, we have the same thing. 
we have the same takes takes situation going on here. And he's got to be careful not to lose his knight actually on g5 now. Oh, on g3, sorry. And his bishop is also in trouble here. A move like queen c4 comes to mind. Just hitting the bishop, obviously. When the bishop has no squares. Sorry. So I kind of like this. And my, my this, this pawn structure is very strong. I can make them blue. This pawn structure is very strong. So I don't have to stress about that. So yeah, so that's maybe where I went a little bit astray. Maybe I should just take with the pawn. I mean, for future, because I don't mind my position. I don't think my position is bad. Um, this is the current position. What does white play? You know, I don't, I don't see anything <clears throat> crazy for white to play. I mean, if he wants to play f5, he's going to have to play knight g3 or g4. But both of these moves obviously weakens his own king as well. Um, maybe he can just play a random development type of move. I'm not quite sure. Because now the other problem is, is let's, let's say let's say we play something different. Let's say let's say we go knight here, and we take. If he plays this way around, then I do. I just play here, don't I? And now of course I'm just going to be able to castle because he can't play bishop to h4 because of g5. So now he plays his bishop wherever. I'm not quite sure where. It doesn't really matter. And I just castle. I, I don't think that because now the f file is open, but I don't. This bishop is cemented here. I don't have to stress about the bishop for now. Um. And now I can just play on the semi-open c file. My king's gonna go to h7. No stress. Uh, his knight doesn't have any good entry squares because all the white squares are on my control. So that is maybe one of the yeah. That is probably the biggest place where I stuffed up. I shouldn't have played bishop takes. I should play pawn takes here. So in this position, I shouldn't play bishop takes. This is probably not a good move. But pawn takes instead seems to be perfectly fine. Small things, uh, small things, guys. That's what it. That that's what ends up happening in chess. One small little thing, and you're screwed. So yeah, but my opponent played well, and he focused very nicely on the weak squares. Very nicely done. So GG. Okay, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, I'll start earlier, probably with uh, with tactics. Uh, maybe I won't start the, that early. I'll start a little bit later in the day. But um. Of course, I'd like to do the. I think I'd like to play the game and do the tactics thing before the Singfield Cup starts because, of course, that's going to screw me completely. Um, the Singfield Cup is really not uh, very useful to me, but oh well. Uh, just from a streaming point of view, yeah. So, um, okay, guys. Thanks for watching me lose for the first time in this series. Damn it. <laughs> It's not been a great day, huh? My blitz is terrible, my tactics okay, the tactics was okay, and then I lost this game. Oh well. Thanks guys, I'll see you guys later.